right, welcome back to Triple C. It's been a while, I know. A lot of stuff has happened. I took a voiceover acting class. I've dedicated myself to reading. I'm still not done with the Warhammer set. And more importantly, I have finally, successfully, truly, uh, <laughs> experienced, I don't know, zen and relaxation after a while. Not just because of what happened after November 3rd and not what's going on right now, but just in general, relaxation is just great. I don't know. I've had I've petitioned and gotten a little bit more time off of my job, mainly because of the fact that it was getting very stressful. Not that the job's bad at all, but circumstances are just make it stressful, specifically like the commute and everything. But I'm happy to have the job. I'm happy to work there. The coworkers are very nice. It's just one of those things where for something like me working in, I've discovered that it's very stressful working in retail for me sometimes. Nothing against people, not nothing against retailers or anything like that. But sometimes for me, it can get a bit, a bit, a lot. Now, I guess. What I have been doing recently as well has been reading a lot more manga and um, mainly just because I subscribed to Shonen Jump a couple of months ago. You know, the Shonen Jump subscription is like $2 and I thought, why not? You know, why not go back and do something? And I think uh, the first thing I did, I dedicated myself to reading the entirety of One Piece up to like the current chapters. And I, I don't recommend anyone ever do that because... It's just a lot of time and dedication to a couple of things that you might like. I think the fun thing about One Piece, I discovered while reading it, is just the wackiness of it all. The wild, the wild coaster, roller coaster ride it takes you on throughout the entirety of the series is just something that cannot be matched by any other piece of like literary work. It's like why people sometimes play Hideo Kojima games, because it's just getting into the mind of a creator. And I think it's the same thing sometimes with uh, with One Piece. It's trying to just get in the mind of Oda, Ichiro Oda. And seeing what he creates and what ideas he has. Because One Piece at points feels like seven different things. I got the same feeling with Hunter x Hunter, where every arc is like, seven every arc could be its own anime or its own manga without the characters in it you know like for example the like the arc that they're on right now with wano wano uh in one piece is such a very distinct and interesting land that like i gotta slow down the mics but that it feels as if it is its own story and i think that's what oda is really good at making stuff its own story uh but <laughs> i understand that people might not like sitting through 900 chapters <laughs> just to get to a oh it's okay which is valid honestly it's really valid um so i would recommend just giving a couple chapters a read just to see if you like it or not because, you know, with COVID right now, you know, there's we all have enough time to just browse for a bit, I guess. Another manga I read at the time was uh, was Chainsaw Man. Uh, Chainsaw Man is a very interesting, interesting story uh, by, by a man known as Fujimoto. Uh, I forget his actual, like, first name. Um, but uh, Fujimoto... Uh, he also wrote a manga called Fire Punch, which is really good, uh, so I've heard. And they both seem to delve into this sort of thing where it's like simple, basic shonen premises that devolve and evolve as the show goes on. You know, you start Chainsaw Man and you think Chainsaw Man is one thing. And then after a couple chapters, it becomes this other thing. But the thing is, 
the story sprinkles a lot of these little crumbs around enough for you to get invested and enough for you to get like involved into the story, if that makes any sense. So the story, such as it is, is that of a boy named Denji. And Denji is, he starts off at the bottom, like every, like 90% of anime characters or manga characters. He starts off at the bottom. His dad died. He owes his dad's debt, which is like millions of dollars, uh, to the Yakuza. Millions and millions of dollars. And he spends most of his life, uh, he, he gets this dog called Puchita, who is a smaller devil, and uh, works with him to uh, kill other devils. Now, the interesting part of the series, as is explained later, is that the devils in the world of Chainsaw Man do not operate on just a generic Dragon Ball Z power level sketch system or, you know, a complicated uh, system of power like Hunter Hunter, you know. Instead, they all operate on the basic premise of if you are afraid of it, it gains power from your fear. Uh, so, you know, we may not... Uh, I think one of the word, one things that, that they talked about was... Um, take, for example, a cup of coffee. You generally aren't afraid of coffee that much. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know you guys, but a cup of joe has never really scared me. So, if there was a coffee devil... He, it probably would not scare you that much. You know, it wouldn't jump out at you. You wouldn't be able to be like, oh, the overwhelming power of this coffee devil. But things like poison, um, infinity, uh, darkness, uh, puppets, zombies, those things gain a lot of power depending on how much people are afraid of them, especially darkness, which is considered an, uh, a primal fear. So everyone sort of instinctively fears darkness. They fear not just the idea of, you know, lights off in a room, but rather the idea of darkness is in of itself as a concept, which is the darkness representing the unknowable, the unattainable, the finality, the infinite void from which normal people cannot... Uh, fathom you know we may go and we may fight and we may live trying to pursue knowledge but the darkness will always be there the darkness of unknowing the darkness of never having anything fully completed or understood that's why it's so fucking scary and that's why it's powerful um and in this world the most powerful devil that isn't darkness or a primordial fear is the gun devil which you know kind of speaks to today's weird culture you know we all have a uh, some people like guns but a lot of people do have a propensity to fear them at least on an instinctual level because even if you don't have an opinion on second amendment rights or anything you always fear the concept of a gun deep down inside i theorize and that is just because it's something that can end lives in seconds and that's what the gun devil does upon its arrival, is annihilate people within a matter of seconds. It annihilates them all in just like a flash, like a Thanos snap. And that's uh, one of the reasons why they have to fight the gun devil and kill the gun devil. Um, Denji, uh, with Puchita, uh, is, uh, they get into a whole accident. I you know, this is a lot of uh, explaining the world before explaining the character, but uh, Denji gets into a whole backstabbing incident. He dies, but Puchita fuses with him. The Chainsaw Devil fuses with him in order to become the Chainsaw Man. And with that, he, he his head turns into a giant chainsaw. His hands have, like, jut out chainsaws, like Wolverine style. Like, just, it's super cool. And the best part about it, I think, is the detail of the gore and the details of the fights that Fujimoto draws really accentuate the gore and the power and the the visceralness of every single battle because it's not like a shonen anime or regular shonen anime where fights can take a long time and they're very detailed and, and fancy free or whatever 
I think Fujimoto in this case wrote it as the devils are just monstrous beings who just rip into each other and pull their guts out and they just fight like rabid animals. So it's never like super, uh, never super like um, fancy. It's all gory and sort of fighting and stuff like that and, and bloody and, you know, radical. Um, and this also is extent, this also is sort of given a polar opposite look when we have the normal scenes, the chill scenes, because outside of the fights, the art adopts more of a simplistic design to it. People aren't wearing a lot of fancy clothes, you know, it's not like a tight Kubo thing, Taito, the guy who made Bleach, where it's like, you know, uh, complicated fashion and interesting designs, but they that really accentuate the look of this one specific character. Everyone sort of has sort of this specific uh, generic look to them. And I think in a way that helps uh, bring the characters a little bit more of a look. It helps uh, bring attention to their face, which helps bring attention to any small details in the story you know if if everyone's wearing like plain clothes it is a lot more important for the artist or at least in fujimoto's case it was a lot more important for him to show the face and show the looks of the characters eye movements can give away something uh, a head tilt can give away something slightly closed or, or widened eyes can give a look at something uh, blushing or a drop of sweat can mean so many things in so many different ways in the idea of uh, Fujimoto's art. And I think that's what, you know, we have in, in this world where we have, you know, One Pieces and, and uh, Naruto's and um, My Hero Academia, where there's like hyper stylized drawings and all this other stuff. I think that Chainsaw Man instead goes for this, outside of the fighting, this weird, this this very nice palette cleansing but subtle uh, drawings and simple drawings, simplistic, not simple, but very very minimalist style. Um, the characters are great too, as I said. There's a lot of uh, simplistic drawings and their facial motion, their facial designs, as well as the motions of their face. It, um, the way they carry themselves conveys a lot more in their characters than just the dialogue that they say. There are a lot of times where entire story arcs or ideas of story arcs or a character's personality can be explained in like just simple drawings. An eerie calm or a sort of dejected look can mean so many different things when excuse me I'm, I have like a party dinner but it means a lot of things when you can kind of just show it with a slight nod or a slight hint or a slight look a drop of sweat you know and so there's a lot of that um my favorite character out of all of them has got to be I can't even actually name a favorite character even the side characters who don't have a lot of <laughs> It's weird how this world has so... It doesn't have a lot of characters, but some characters are so minor that you'd think that they wouldn't be consequential, but the fact that they are just kind of there, sometimes can... And everything's drawn so well, and he can... And Fujimoto does so much with simplistic movement, can make you really uh, get interested in a character, even if they say nothing. It just brings way more questions. And as the world evolves, as the story goes on, you start to ask more and more questions, which uh, then leads to more and more of a sort of enlightened aspect to it. A more heightened aspect to it. And people have already dug deep into the idea of uh, a chainsaw man uh, and its subtle morals and subtle ideas, you know, like the idea of ignorance, uh, the idea of man and I mean, this is not just as a, a man, but mankind constantly striving for more, uh, the fear of knowledge, the con control. Um, it even 
tackles things like grooming, sort of yeah, grooming, I would say, and just the idea of friendship and you know kinship and you know what you know your family that you choose or the family that you're dealt. All this stuff is in Chainsaw Man, and it's only like a hundred chapters, <laughs> which is why it's a really decent read. the The comics go faster, the chapters go way faster than I think even One Piece. Um, which is why I highly recommend Chainsaw Man for people who, you know, don't really like the generic anime, but still want to try something interesting. I also read uh, another comic called Jagan, uh, which is a wilder one, which I would not recommend to someone who's never read anime because it is, uh, it's wild. And I think it's one of those things where it's, really good but that's because i've you know for a long time in my life i used to read manga as a kid uh as a kid whenever i got good grades on my reports or whatever my mom would give me money and i would buy books or manga or 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 um what was it books manga comics whatever from a barnes and noble i would just go to barnes and noble and get books and she'd pay for them and so uh, having my life, part of my life in phases, uh, liking comics, manga, and books, and, you know, having a phase where I don't really read, and then coming back, and, you know, uh, that's accumulated a sort of threshold for me when it comes to that sort of stuff, and that threshold, I think, uh, prepares me for a lot of the really messed up, uh, things that the, um, that, Jagan has um so trust me it gets weirder uh from the introduction so our main character is a police officer and he's fed up with life he believes that he's living this dead-end job even though he's a police officer he's also really got this sort of weird propensity that we see even in the beginning that he really just wants to live an interesting life but he also really just wants to get an excuse to shoot someone which, you know, in, in the political climate of today is really fucked. <laughs> like, the fact that, like, he's outwardly really nice, but secretly inside he just wants to fucking, like, let loose and just shoot people he doesn't like. And he he's in a marriage that seems happy, but he, deep down inside, doesn't want to get married. And he's just, he doesn't really like the idea of getting married because it's a finality to his life. And he's 27, and he's just fucked I hate everything. I'm living this police... Like, he's not like a cop. He's more like a... Like, um... Like a, like a mall cop, essentially, in America. He's just a beat cop. He goes around, and he's like, Hey, guys, knock it off, or whatever. Um, basically, he contemplates his life, how much it sucks, and how he's gonna fucking die and live a lame life. And then, giant... Not giant, but weird frogs fall from the sky and embed themselves into people and turn people into monsters. And it's up to our main hero, uh, heroine, no, main hero, yeah, their main hero to ki kill them all <laughs> and get these frogs. And it's a whole different thing. I want to give every bit of it away, but it's really good. Um, if not fucking depraved and just really weird um the the manga itself advertises itself as a it's a a new dark hero comic and it truly is a very dark hero you see in this show characters who come off as very nice uh only get uh ruined uh by their own petards and their own powers no matter how good they are it's as if to say you know you can try and live a good life, and people will live good lives, and people do get good lives. Um, but it's a very hard thing to live a good life, because you're always going to have that little side of yourself, like the main character that just wants that you have to fight with every fucking day. That's like, God, this sucks. God, my life is horrible. You know, I'm working this dead-end job. I could smack the customer, you know, something like that. Or, God, I don't like living here i want to burn the house down or you know we all have like or you know stuff where you get mad at nothing 
you know, and, and it's your own mind gaming against itself. And sometimes we think that, but it's mainly because we don't know what we have until it's gone. You know, uh, we might not like our significant others. There might be days where your significant other annoys you, but or you feel detached from them. But it's only when they're gone do you realize how important they were to you and how much of a, a purpose that they have in your life. Um, and it's one of those things where it's, it, it talks about that and does it in the most zero to a hundred way possible, I would say. There's a lot of times where this show goes from, when the manga goes from zero to a hundred. And unlike, um, I think unlike uh, Chainsaw Man, Jagan has really much a, a heightened version of character design. It's always heightened. It's all, not, not like super absurdist, but like detailed. Everything is detailed. Everything is precise. Everything is interesting. And every detail of the house, every detail of our character and its abilities and his look and the enemy's looks and the uh, places around are just, it's very, very good. I will also give you a trigger warning for this manga. If you do read it, there are instances of um, rape, a lot of death, first off, and uh, rape, just the sex is in there. So if you're young, don't read it. Um, you know, murder, obviously, just, uh, uh, just a lot of very fucking red card shit. I don't even really want to give all of it away, but there are some points where I'm like, oh God, this is, it's beyond weird at points. Um, but I, I would say it was, a, it's a pretty decent read. It's still going right now. And if you like it, you like it. If not, you, you know, uh, sucks uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to be like that it sucks to suck now um I've also been reading or at least listening to the audiobook of uh Stormfront by Jim Butcher which is part of the Dresden Files uh which is a story about this guy named Harry Blackstone Copperfield Dresden conjures name at your own peril um and he is a uh, mage in Chicago and it really tries to nail this sort of um, noir-esque feeling where he is a mage, but it's got a lot of the subtleties and sprinkles, at least in this first book, of classic detective stories, classic noir stories, where it's, you know, um, a guy who's, you know, morally flexible sometimes uh, gets wrapped up in a scheme that's bigger than him and he has to find a way out of it. But he also has to solve this murder. And he also has to, you know, do this, that, and the third. You know, he's got so many different things he has to deal with. Which also is one of the things that makes me think of, I want to write a character in a D&D &D campaign, which is a mage. But he's like, like, like with G Dresden, he's a professional mage. But he's like dealing with so much of the magical BS, you know, like... It's like, oh, God, now I got to consult with the Elder Gods. I got to consult with the Celestials. Oh, man, this so sucks because they're all, like, super litigious and it's boring. And, uh, you know, and that's, I feel like, a very fun idea of a mage, <laughs> especially in, like, D&D &D or whatever story. Um, but the audiobook is really good on, I think it's, uh, let me just check the uh, narrator here. Uh, give me a second. I was going to credit audiobook narrators because audiobook narrators are fucking just troopers, man. Let's see. Uh, like, you don't understand how much troopers are when they come to reading audiobooks because you know, it's a lot of dedication to, to an audiobook. Uh, James Marsters is the name of the narrator. He's really good in this uh, storyline, in this, uh, in, in reading the book, rather. And he does one of the things that I really like about audiobooks and I think really needs to be delved into more, which is, I think a lot of audiobook artists, 
can our readers uh, sometimes get into this boring, monotonous thing where they're like, and then I did this, and then I did this. But James Marsters, when he when he does audiobook is uh, audiobooks, he's it's probably because there's there were a couple books that came up before the audiobook, but it's a lot of like this is a guy that read up on all the books and was given a lot of notes and information and probably was given good direction too on top of that because it feels as if you're really in first person and I feel like sometimes it gets to be a little bit of a problem when you're reading in first person is like you're reading as yourself reading something in first person uh I feel like if you're reading in first person, that's a time for an audiobook artist to really uh, delve into character work and really figure out, like, what is this character I'm bringing to this book? What is, what do I know at this point? What does me, the character, know at this point? How can I work that, you know? I think that that is what's missing from a lot of the game, a lot of the books. Sorry, I was yawning. I like... Let me see. Oh, dang. It didn't even catch up the audio of the yawn. I love this mic. <laughs> this mic makes it sound like if I'm yawning, it's just a weird pause. Um, but, like, that's what I love about the book. I mean, in the, in, in the audio book. It's just the, the, the fact that they go this far. And I think this is also why I like to do podcasts and audio books one day. I would love to, I want to do an audio book one day, but I'm, I've been using ACX to try and find something that's good for me. Um, is the fact that it's very intimate. Like, doing this as a podcast and talking to you guys and just trying to figure out what all this shit is in life is hard, but it's also very interesting because it's a very um, very one-on-one experience. You know, you're here with me and I'm here with you and we're just talking about some stuff, shooting the shit, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's going on here, you know? And it's a moment of you just letting me into your mindscape for a little bit and allowing you to me to fuck around in it a little bit, you know? And I think that's the fun part of it all, you know? Letting me into your mind um, and just letting me be there for a bit. Today's sponsor is Mitchell. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have a sponsor. <laughs> Imagine if I did. But no, I... Uh... I do not, other than Anchor, uh, which I uh, have used to distribute my podcast. It's really good. It's it's nice for me. It's been really good for me. Um, but otherwise, I've also recently gotten to downloading League of Legends. I haven't played it. I just download it a lot. Uh, there'll be like phases where I'm like, I download it a couple and play a couple games and then uninstall it. And then maybe months later, I'll reinstall it, play it a couple games, and then uninstall it and then reinstall it and uninstall it because it's the same with me and RuneScape and me and MMOs where it's like I feel like that stuff only has me for like a set amount of time before I get tired and I want to leave like I want to play Final Fantasy 14 don't get me wrong Final Fantasy 14 seems like a really fucking good game the problem is um I just have a very short attention span sometimes and one of the parts of MMOs I'd like is, uh, or I would like to delve more into, is the social aspect. And sometimes things like RuneScape or Warcraft, Warcraft less than RuneScape, um, sort of have, you know, this community of just people who do things by themselves. And I feel like that's the shitty part about RuneScape, is that it's a really decent game. It's just the fact that, like, a lot of it is ruined by the fact that you're mostly just alone for a lot of it and being alone is painful for me in an mmo where you just see like everyone just doing their cool shit and you're just kind of like hey guys can i join and then they're like nah bro we got a guild but maybe that's just me i don't know maybe i should i might you know if i ever go back to mmos i'll try and apply myself more so that'll be a thing anyways um that's what my week's been like. It's been a hellish, hectic week. A lot of stuff happened personally, which is why I took a couple weeks off. Just because 
they needed me a little bit more and you know i'm back now for the foreseeable future i'm also trying to start up a twitch channel so if you ever want to come over there and see uh i'll post it uh later it's been a lot of just tinkering with uh the formula and seeing what sticks either way thank you very much for sticking with me today you're lovely and uh tell me what you want me to talk about or what any questions you have for me in the comment section like and subscribe or i mean if you're on youtube you could do that i mean i don't know if uh spotify has a like and subscribe option but you can do that if you try to and just email uh, spotify and say hey i like this um either way have a good day and you are loved and i love you shit that didn't work hold on i tried to, I tried to turn it off with uh, my, my mouse we'll try this time with the space bar